I'm just gonna like slide in and then that's gonna be my intro. Just like sliding in. Hey guys, I'm Kiara, Cashmere Sun, and welcome to my artist diaries. I went rock climbing the other day, yesterday, and uh, I did this really hard circuit and I almost made it. It was like one of those ones where like, you're literally upside down and you're climbing and I pushed myself a little too hard and like I was like, was like in this moment of like jaguar cheetah climbing up the rocks and I was like, you know, I pulled myself back and then I pulled, I like jumped up and I totally scraped my epidermis off of my hands. So I'm hoping that that heals relatively quickly because I really love rock climbing. Uh, anyway, so this vlog is very mushroom heavy. Um, I draw a morale mushroom with alcohol markers. I start to plant my mushrooms. You'll see, you'll see. It's fun. I think you'll like it. I enjoyed the process, so I hope you like it. And uh, yeah, I pack, there's some like ASMR packing video in here and my birds. My birds show off their art installation. They're so amazingly talented. I'm so proud of them for, you know, starting up this like gallery space. Like the, the birds are so talented. You'll, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for uh, watching. Grab some water, grab a snack, get your laundry. Let's chill, <laughs> that's it. Look, we made a nest. So pretty, what a good job. It's an art installation. Look how nice. Wow, you guys really outdid yourself. I really love what you did with the place. Yeah, that's good. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty. Oh, okay. Getting a little frisky. So, this is a moral mushroom art stream that I did on Twitch. I'm going to be utilizing alcohol markers, specifically Uhu, Prismacolor, Jelly Roll, and a Micron pen. I love morels because they're absolutely delicious. I haven't found them in years, but I hope one day that I can find them again in the wilderness. They are a choice edible. Completely gourmet. Deliciousness. Oh, amazing. This one year, I found them in a patch. And everyone was so excited to have found them. We stuck them on the grill and barbecued them right up. And, ah, uh, the memories, they were so good. It's been a while, though. So, my technique is to put down a layer first of a very neutral color because I don't really love white spots poking through. Once I block in those colors uh, in very neat strips or as neat as I can make them, I'll start by you know going in with a medium grade marker. The thing that have to keep in mind when you're working with markers is that it's always light to dark and the markers will bleed and they'll kind of like meld into the rest of the artwork so you have to keep that in mind as you're going it's kind of like gouache in that sense like gouache is kind of finicky 
it doesn't always dry the color that you applied. You know what I mean? Anyway. I think it's really important. Oh wait, one more thing. This is the tip to tip method. This is a really great way to add color to your marker drawings without putting the marker on the page. Uh, sometimes when you put the marker directly on the page, it can be like way too loud rather than just being, you know, that little soft little moment of color. And that's what I wanted in this. So for this, I'm putting down my uh, darker hue. And once I get those like little nodes and nodules down, I'll start adding in, um, either I'll add like that lightish color over it to kind of desaturate everything, or I'll just kind of let it ride. It really depends. Morals are, oh god, am I going to say this right? It's a pyrochorite. Pyrochorite? I'll put it up on the screen. Basically, what that means is that there are several versions of moral mushrooms. Kind of like jaguars have like a light and a dark coat, depending on, you know, their genetics. Moral mushrooms are the same. So they've been found all over the world. Um, mostly in the north in the temperate climates, but they're pretty much found everywhere. And they're so cool. Um, there was this whole battle over what mushroom was going to be named what back in the day. And even right now, they're still trying to figure out how to classify morels because they're still, the jury is still out for a couple things. So I think it's really cool that they're researching these guys while you know, we're experiencing them, sort of thing. It's like a living science, you know what I mean? Science is life, science is living. <laughs> As above, so below. I've been learning a lot about mushrooms lately because one, they're just so fun. They're so much fun. And two, they're aesthetic. And three, they're delicious. Most of them. Some of them are delicious. Some of them are not. And uh, we shouldn't eat those mushrooms because they can unlive us. But um, yeah, there's this funny saying about mushrooms that all mushrooms are edible at least once. <laughs> so don't eat mushrooms that you're not sure if it is the mushroom, like you have to be fairly experienced to know what mushrooms are going to be okay and what mushrooms are not going to be okay. Yeah, I do a lot of research on mushrooms and I think I'd still want someone to like be like, hey, is this what I think it is? You know, like if I found something. Anyway. So morals have an imposter um, among it. <laughs> they have this thing called the false moral. I don't think it looks very much like morals, but it does apparently. It's called a, uh, a false moral. And instead of it having like a brown and kind of creamy cap situation like these do, it's like a beige kind of cap. They have like a redder sort of mushed together look. There's also this mushroom that is another morel imposter and it's really cute. It's called the fairy saddle mushroom. And that mushroom is really adorable. It gives me some really great vibes. I kind of want to draw a fairy saddle mushroom, but like in illustration form to just like, you know, like make it cute. But <laughs> 
Yeah, I was like, that's like the best name. So I started looking up other mushroom names because I've always seen in like popular culture, uh, fly, uh, Amanitas. And I was like, what does that mean? Why is they, why, why, why is they, why are they called fly Amanitas? And so I looked it up and apparently in the old days, they used to take the mushroom, grind it up after it was dried and then stick it in milk and put it outside and it would kill the flies. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. I hope like no animals found their way into the <laughs> into that mushroom because that would have not been a great time for whatever animal found their way into that mushroom. Oy, oy, oy. Anyway. So basically what I'm just doing now is adding those really dark values. And depending on like how I want the gradient to go, I'll start to add um, the lesser colored color over top to just kind of like spread it out. Um, and those, you know, this is that moment where it's like, oh my goodness, did I just mess up my drawing? Like, look how dark that is. But it, it's crazy. The, the marker just goes right back into the paper. Love that. That watercolor block is actually something that I got from my trip to the art store. Um, in my last video, I'll link it if you want to go and see. But it's a watercolor block by Legion. It is really cool. It's Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. It says, handcrafted with a watercolorist in mind, this rugged and textured substrate is our latest creation in artisan paper. I'm not sponsored. I, I just like this paper. Each cold press sheet naturally receives applied moisture, making it ideal for blending and lifting color. That last part was uh, what sold me because I was like, ooh, lifting and blending color. I do that. I lift. I blend. This is, this is beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I love how it came out uh, with this paper. And the interesting thing about this paper is that it's pre-stretched, which means that they glue the outsides of the paper so that it's like easier for watercolorists to do their thing. I am not a watercolorist, so I needed that little plastic sheet behind my markers. You can kind of see it in the video. It's really great. Um, it, it keeps everything from bleeding through onto the second page so that you're not ruining two sheets of paper. I love this thing. That thing came from Uhu and I gotta tell you, mm, so good. Excellent. Love. Anyway. So I'm finishing up and just finishing the grass and things like that. Uh, I really love doing this illustration. It was so fun. A little nerve wracking at times because you got to get all the little nostrils of the moral right. But <laughs> I had I had a good time. It was uh, it was really great. I think I have time for one more mushroom fact. So in Oregon there is the world's largest mushroom and it is wait 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 i have it written down i have it written down it is 3.7 square miles which is the largest organism on earth isn't that nuts and it's a parasitic mushroom so it like it monches on trees it's a monster fungus eating trees out in Oregon. How cool is that? And it produces these mushrooms called honey mushrooms. They look so good, oh my goodness. I would like to eat some of those. The other thing is, it's like, I saw this on Wikipedia and everyone's like, 
or not everyone, I guess the person who wrote the Wikipedia article was like, oh, this is how they've been trying to kill the mushroom. And I'm like, why would you try to kill the mushroom? Don't kill the mushroom. The mushroom's cool. It's there for a reason. Leave it alone. But I have faith this time. I think that I can do this. I trust that I can do this. I hope that I can do this. <laughs> I don't think there's no, like, like a way to do this in like a clean, neat way. I'm just gonna have to. I do feel like a little kid though. You ever be like making weird potions and concoctions as a little kid? And like, hey, perfect. Smells like what straw would smell like on the stove top. It's just like straw, you know? I wonder if it has to be a rolling boil or if it can just kind of be like a gentle boil situation. Um, also, I wonder how many of these I'm gonna have to do because I feel like this is gonna be enough for maybe like a fifth of the entire thing. I don't know. We shall see. Hot straw. Ooh, I am getting tired. This is the fifth pot that I did. I got my bucket up to three gallons. That's definitely enough. I'm trying to um, kind of get rid of some of the heat so I keep like moving the straw around but it's still pretty hot so it's probably gonna have to like rest for a little while before i can put the, the spawn in but this has been pretty exciting and interesting my kitchen's a mess it's it's kind of gross um but that's okay because i can clean it but honestly, this was actually really enjoyable. My arm's a little tired from stirring straw and doing this, because this is pretty heavy. Definitely getting a little workout. And here we are. Oh, we did it. All right, I need to clean up. Hello there. It is the next day. It is the morning. And uh, yeah. In my workout clothes. So I'm gonna do this quickly so I can work out and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I have to take the straw out so that I can put the straw back in with the grain, the inoculated grain. And this straw has cooled down significantly. Kind of smells like um, like a farm after like a lovely rain. I think. 
Is this the easy way? Oh, that's that's lovely. Lap of straw. Kind of felt weird. Oh my god, let's not throw all of my wet straw onto the ground, shall we? Okay. So then this kind of smells pretty good. I think these are rye berries. Um definitely not gluten free. So yeah, it's basically a straw and um, straw and rye inoculated rye berry parfait. And these are like little mycelium clumps. And it's not mold, it's actually like the mushroom that is growing. And then what this does is it gives it a food source and something to kind of break down and colonize. All right, and here's the rest of it. And then that's pretty much it. I just kind of put the lid on it. And I let the mushrooms do their thing. Ta-da! Yay! Yeah, that's it. Now I just kind of wait for this thing to, to do its thing. And it'll probably be a couple weeks before I really like see something. Yeah, I'm super excited. Mushroom dance. Okay, that's enough. Goodbye. Mushroom update. Look at that. Get out of there, bug. You're not welcome here. So that looks like mold, but it's not. It's mycelium. I'm so excited. So what's going to end up happening is that when the mycelium grows enough, they're gonna start popping out of these little holes, which is gonna be really great. I'm so excited. Even the birds are excited. And that's it guys, you made it to the end of the vlog. I hope that this vlog, you know, gave you some sort of comfort, joy, inspiration, etc. I really love cultivating mushrooms. I feel like it's a lot of fun. It's really mentally relaxing to me, and uh, you get to literally get the fruits of your labor after.